wise man once said, why should we not all live in peace and harmony? We look up at the same stars, we are fellow passengers on the same planet, we dwell beneath the same sky. What matters it along which road each individual endeavors to find the ultimate truth? Seated at the desk behind me is a young man whom you don't know because you haven't met him yet. You will meet him in just a moment and you will know him better in a few minutes. He's a young man from another country, but a country which with us is in this same one world, and he with his people dwell into the same sky and look up at the same stars as you and I. But who is he? What is his name? What is he doing here? Well, those are questions that I think he can answer much better than I can. My name is Finn Dahlgren. I come from Flen, Sweden, a little town of 7,000 inhabitants situated about 80 miles south of Stockholm. There I live with my father, who is a veterinary surgeon, my mother, two sisters and a brother. Like all my schoolmates of my own, own age, I have had four years of English, three of German, two of French, and of course, Swedish. When I go back to Sweden, I have three more years of schooling before I can go to university. I have come here to America to, s to attend an American high school for one year. The program, the organization through which I came is called the American Field Service and works for better understanding between countries. It is privately sponsored. The Kiwanis Club in Cedar Rapids, Iowa sponsored me. And its own purpose is that of creating better understanding and goodwill. We stay in private homes and try to, uh, to live as much as possible like American youth. I come from a country in the north of Europe where the days in the winter are never bright, but where there is never uh, darkness during a summer night. In early centuries, our country used to be much engaged in wars, and all people know about the Vikings who came over here as soon as long before Columbus as it is today since Columbus first could tell the world about his discovery. Their main occupation was to go out and plunder and fight and kill other people. But since we became a democracy, it has been our main goal to stay out of wars and try to create the goodwill around the world. We think we have been successful even if we, in wars between world powers, in some people's opinion, have acted cowardly to save our own skin. If everything in the world of today turns out well, we will next year be able to celebrate our 140th anniversary of freedom from wars. Let us compare a, a family here and in Sweden. First, the home, where, of course, the American family would live in a house of their own, but the Swedish family would have just as big a chance to be living in a modern apartment of two or, uh, and three rooms in a kitchen. Uh, both would have uh, a refrigerator, um, gas or electric stove, and possibilities of using a washing machine. The American family would of course not lack um, a car but surely in the Swedish family there would be at least two or three bicycles. Whereas the American jumps in his car to take a trip, we in, in Europe take our light, strong bicycles wherever we are going, to school, to jobs, appointments, or just for amusement riding around downtown. If you don't happen to belong to every fifth family in Sweden which owns a car, you can use the railway of the people. For the fare of about one dollar for every 50 miles, it would carry you almost anywhere in our long land. As I said, my father is a veterinary surgeon, and I like to go with him, so therefore I have been able to see quite a few Swedish farms. In the area where I live, the larger farms have about 30 to 40 cows, and they are all dairy cattle. There are, on the farms they also have one or several horses, 
And on some big farms they have one, two and sometimes three tractors too. The horses will always be there if they do not find out a revolutionary thing that can walk up steep stony hills and zigzag between trees, for it is in the forest where the horse is invaluable. To every farm a big piece of forest usually belongs, and there the farmer works during the winter. He says that what he makes up money out of it, out of is um, his forest and his grain. He says that his cows do not pay very well, and you might agree with him, as we in Sweden can buy a quart of milk for the price of seven cents, or about one third of the price you pay. Since the war. Farm labor in Sweden has become especially expensive. So therefore, the Swedish farmers have uh, copied the American pattern of using more machinery and less labor on their farms. But as we proceed, America seems to always be a step ahead of us in this respect. In Sweden, we are most interested in America. We read your magazines, tra some translated, some still in English, and try to make a picture of that big, busy land in the web. We read about uh, le the latest developments and read about standards of living and so on. We know how big the sums of money are that we borrowed after the war, but we do not realize that what has been done has been done by kindliness and with the attempt of the American people to build up build up Europe and build up uh, peace and goodwill. It seems as what has been done, some view it with suspicion, only with suspicion. The money we borrowed, we used for buying products and um, machinery from the United States. When we were able to stand on our own feet, we wanted to sell some of our products back to the United States to get money to pay our dollar debt with. But Un the United States didn't want her market full of cheap material from Europe, but uh, how should we get money to pay our debt with wi when uh, the country that had the dollars wouldn't buy the products we had to sell? So there we are now standing with a big bill, the interest of which is growing larger and larger for every day. There is now in Europe a great demand that the United States opens its port to our trade we are certain that we can make some products cheaper than you, and they would probably be, pref be preferred by the American public. For instance, in Sweden, we can buy fine prefabricated houses for the price of $7,000. If we could find a market for them here in America, we would be able to buy, for instance, instance your cars that are so much in demand all over the world. All people all around the world like to see movies, and so do we in Sweden. As uh, about every second movie comes from the United States, of course, we have made a picture in our minds of this country. What picture would you get of a country where every second here seems, does not seem to have a work, but still is uh, able to throw money around himself and, and live an easy life on Broadway in Florida or in Hawaii? We have also the understanding that, uh, especially you, totally lack respect for older persons and those in higher ranks. But it is wrong, as I have found a very nice form of respect here, created by admiration and not through formality that is uh, usual in Europe. When I came here, I was very impressed to find people so religious. I had never thought or heard about that the Americans should be more religious than, for instance, we. But there is a great difference. In, in Sweden, we belong to the Lutheran Church, which is sponsored by the government. The minister's job is to have a sermon once a week at church, and once in a while go to the hospital and preach there, not visit individuals like here in America, but actually preach. He also performs marriages and baptisms, which is usually done at, in the homes. He, uh, his main job, main job is to keep the census and keep records 
of people who are born, who move, or die. We also have uh, smaller congregations, and they are more like your system, with uh, a minister who is paid uh, by collection. He is, uh, he also takes care of the members, like here in America, and I think that makes a great difference. I found a much warmer feeling, belief, and enthusiasm in your churches, which has made a very strong impression on me. As I said, we in Sweden study languages much more than you do here in America. I have had four years of English, for instance, and, and it is required for everyone in my, of my age. And uh, we also, every subject until you are 17 years of age is required, and every youth gets the same education. We carry 15, uh, 12 or 15 subjects and we make, a pro, uh, we make a schedule for a week instead of one day and repeat the schedule week after week. So therefore, we, we are able to carry more subjects. We, uh, uh, we also study, except uh, these foreign languages, we also have, uh, uh, in our Swedish course, we have about 20 hours of Danish and Norwegian and study their le literature. Since I came in September, I have met only fine, kind people who, are, who have been eager to know about Europe and how we live and think. If I may have the same nice experience, you can be sure that I will tell my countrymen about modern America that you should be better known for their friendliness and a desire for peace than for all the inventions for which you are so famous. Today, you met Finn Dahlgren from Sweden. Finn is here as, an ex as a student in one of our high schools in the Middle West of the United States. You now know somebody you didn't know before, a man from another country, once was a long ways away back in the time of the Vikings, but today, not many hours by air. And so in this ever-shrinking world, we learn to know more people. Finn's language uh, gets in between us a little bit, but is that so important as the things that do not get between us, except as bonds which bring us closer together, our common likes and dislikes, and our needs and our wants, in other words, our common humanity. So, we asked you today to meet Finn Dahlgren from Sweden, and through him to meet his people, a people who dwell with us on this same planet, under the same sky, and who look up at the same stars. 